Hey guys, welcome back to one of our newest tutorials. Um, today's tutorial will be programming. As I mentioned before, Tuesday, Wednesdays will be about programming. Um, and today is the 9th and it's Wednesday. Well, just turned it to Wednesday 30 minutes ago or 20 minutes ago. But that's alright. Um, this tutorial we will be doing something really easy, not a big deal. Just have to start with this series with um, of course we'll be using C sharp as it's my favorite uh, programming language um, I mean it's pretty flexible language and easy to learn and you could do almost anything you want with it um, so yeah things you'll need for this uh, tutorial is Visual Studio any version you like I'll be using Visual Studio 2012 so let's get to work All right. Open Visual Studio. Hey, right, here you go. Visual Studio just opened. Um, go on new project and make sure to choose Visual C Sharp. Then Windows Form Applications and just write my first application and hit Enter or click on OK, whatever you like. Um, again, I'll be assuming that you guys have very very basic understanding of programming languages um you have understanding of conditions if statements this kind of stuff um very 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 basic stuff i'm not asking you to know like every single thing in programming like just really basic stuff um every week we'll be making different programs software you could you guys could request uh what kind of software or program you want me to program for next week and all that if I don't get any requests I will just make up something um the only reason I'm doing this is because in my opinion the only way you will learn programming or anyone would learn programming is by practicing and experience and not by just watching a video on YouTube teaching you how to teaching you, teaching you the tools and then teaching you different stuff I mean yeah they do help you but but what's really important is practicing i've been programming for eight years already and the only way i learn programming is by practicing on my own so let's get to work all right so the first thing is this is your form um resize it wherever you like sorry all right just resize it wherever you like and this program or application or whatever you want to call it go ahead and call it we will be making you have two text boxes um you will have a button that copies text from one text box to the other all right and you have another button that changes a text and another button that changes the color of the text box okay um it's pretty simple again just something we start with and hopefully next week we will move on to something even more challenging or a little bit challenging more challenging than this um all right so go ahead and oops sorry that's a mistake all right so go ahead and open up your toolbox um this should i hate this mouse um come on <laughs> excuse me it's just me. You go ahead. Why is not going? There you go. Okay. All right. You'll find it on your left side, right here. If you don't, just go to I believe you just go to Window, and go to Windows. Um, excuse me, not really. Go to View. Yeah, on View, and then you'll find the Toolbox right over here. Click on it and it should pops up right there. All right? Um, on here, just get a button, double click on it, and it will be dropped right here. On there. Just double click on it. Um, also, get text box. You could just type on your keyboard text box and you'll find it. It will select it by itself. Double click twice. So we have two different text boxes. Um, let's resize each one of them and place it. Um, by the way, if you don't see the grid that I have on my form, you see this those dots. It's called a grid. This really helps you snap your tools. 
Um, if you don't have it, it's pretty easy to get it. Just go to tools, go to options, scroll all the way down to Windows Forms Designer. On here, you by default this will be on snap lines. Um, you want to change that to snap grid, and then hit on OK. And if you don't see your grid, still don't see, just close it from here and hit on yes. Go to your solution explorer and double click on your form one more time and I bet you'll find a grid. Alright, so back to our design. Um, you see this little arrow? Click on it and change your text box into multi-line. So you could freely change it and adjust it to the size you like. And I think this would be a good size. Alright, grab the other text box. Now just resize the button to something probably this big. Okay, now get this and put rust right next to it. Um, let me see the width of this text box. On your properties, scroll all the way down to size. Change the width to 184. So they just be exactly the same. So the width is, was 184. That's pretty good. Change this to, again, multi-line. Drag it all the way down and resize it. Let it have the same height. Oops, I apologize for that mistake. Okay, now make the form a little bit smaller. Get two more buttons actually. That's one and that's two. Place each one under, one under each text box, I'm sorry. Okay. Get the other one. They will obviously have the same width and height because of the snap grid tool we have okay now let's change the button one text to dash arrow and call it send so this will send or just that actually that will be fine by itself that will do good you could go up to font and change properties from font Go to size and put it as 14 probably would be good, yeah. That's fine, it's not a big deal. Um, go to button 2 and change text into something like change text, that's it. And button 3, change it to change text color. Okay. Alright, I think that's pretty good for design. Um, Just to let you guys know something. Uh, for example, now when I double clicked on the form by mistake, it created an event by itself. And to keep my codes neat and clean, I would actually just delete this by just delete it. However, this will cause a problem. Now, if you close the code and go back to your form without even closing, just going back to your design, it will pop up a problem. And that's fine. Um, just click on the error wherever you have it. Click on it, and go ahead and delete that event since now this event doesn't exist no more so visual Studio, visual studio just throws an error saying hey I can't find this event you initialized it but I can't find it that's fine just select it and delete it now control s to save or control s close it and there you go your form is back normal all right uh, any unnecessary stuff and let's get to work I think this is taking a little bit too long, but it's fine. All right, now double click on the send button. Let's send text from one to other. And just put, actually if you come to properties and you click on the text box, so, so what we want is from this text box, this one, anything I write in this text box to be moved into the, to the next one, all right? So anything I write here and I click here, everything was written here to be cut and pasted right here, right? So, first of all, we need to know the identification name of each. You know, like an identity. You have an identity. These objects, each object has an identity. Identity. All right. So, let's see the first identity. So, when we talk to it, we know to who we're talking. All right. So, now, this one called text box 2. And this one, text box 1. That's pretty weird, actually. That's really weird. I did the opposite. It's supposed to be. Ah, right, it doesn't matter. 
So we want text box 1 to be equal to text box 2. So whatever in text box 2, I mean, so whatever in text box 2 to be in text box 1. Sounds a little bit confusing. And we want that to happen in the event that we click on this button. So the code will go under the button events. Okay, so double click the button, you will see it initializes an event of private, I mean, sort of function of private, and it's a button click. Um, all right, so again, we want text box one, so just let's call it hey, text box one dot text, your value, your text value will be equal to text box two dot text. So, what we just said actually is text box one dot text, hey, text box one, your value will be equal to text box two value. Now, let's run this and see what's going on. So let's write something in text box. Oh, by the way, to run your program, you just go to start. Right over here. Or from, key from your keyboard, hit a 5. And if you have one of those fancy new laptops, the Beats one, whatever you call it, um, the Envy, you F5 won't work as it will uh, just light your keyboard. So press on Control F5 and that should run it as well. Alright, so now type something here. Hello. Oops, hello. Thanks for watching my YouTube videos, whatever. And they click on the send button. And here you go. You have an exact copy of what, what we just wrote in here. But right over here. However, now when I click, when I hit here, I want everything to be erased from this text box. I don't want it to exist anymore. So simple um, after this action is happens now just empty text box one text box i mean sorry text box two dot text the hey your value text box two your value is going to equal to empty string dot empty you could do it either this way or with that or just putting this it really doesn't matter both of them works i just prefer this one i don't know why okay all right, now let's see. Run it one more time. Whatever, blah, 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 blah. Send. There you go. It was removed from here and then it moved to the other side. Um, now we want to actually move it backwards to here. Right? Now when I click here, look what's going to happen. Everything disappears. Why? Because... Because now text box one or text box two actually is empty. There is nothing inside it. So obviously we'll copy empty space and paste it there. And we don't want this. There are multiple ways to handle this problem. One of them is by making this button actually return or actually when this button is pressed again to copy this text into the other one. Or you could just disable the button after it copies the text once. Okay, um, let's actually do it. Let, let, let's send back the text from text box one to text box two. Okay, you can't just put text box two dot text equal text box one since this will just keep it in the same place. Nothing will happen. Watch when you write something, nothing gonna happen. No action gonna be taken except here, copies it and leaves it there. It's like we didn't do nothing here, we didn't empty out anything. Um, this will be an if statement. We will check. So we will say, let's get rid of this. We're not gonna need this now. We're gonna say if text box two, text box two dot text is not empty. Empty. So if if this is not empty, if there's something inside here, if something was written. We want to move the text from here to there. So if this one is not empty and this one is empty. So if this one's not empty and text box one dot text is actually empty. We want to move everything. Oops. We want to move everything from two to one. Everything from two to one. Text box one dot text equals text box two dot text. However, if so we're gonna put else if Text box two dot text 
is, uh, is in fact empty but the other one is not empty then just reverse the process so now it's gonna be text box 2 dot text equal text box 1 dot text and you don't really need those parentheses you don't need to make it compound but I do like com making compound conditions now let's run it and let's see so if I type something here and I click on the button it's actually gonna move it to there oops and we forgot something actually we forgot to empty out text box 1 just one dot I mean text box 2 because string dot empty we forgot to empty things out and here text box one that text is gonna be empty now let's run it one more time and type whatever you want oops what's happening all right here you go type whatever you want and send it was sent now let's press it again now we'll send back from the from this text box to the other one and that works just fine there's no problem with it um let's see how we're doing with the time all right 60 minutes is fine all right now when i want to press on this button i want this text to be changed those arrows to be changed so just click on this again the the action will take place on, on this button when i press this button something will happen so again cl double click on it new function is initialized let's do this button okay now let's Go back to our design. Let's see the identification name of this button. So scroll all the way up, and hey, the name is button one. So button one. The text. Hey, your value is gonna be just the opposite. That's it. Now run it. And oops, sorry. And here it works. Now what I really want to do is, if I write something, now I want the text, if, if, if I'm changing the text from here to there, to keep switching, like, um, let's try it one more time. So right now I write something here, the arrows are correct. When I send it, now I want to press this one, and it should send, and it should give me the arrow that's sending back this way, and I press it, it works. Now when I press on this one again, I want this arrow to switch back to what it was. And it's the same thing actually, it's pretty easy. Copy whatever you did before. And paste it here. And copy this button one the text equal this way. And just change it. So here, if text box 2, so this one is correct. Now this, just switch it. Now let's see. Run it. Um, I think it's the opposite. Yeah, it's the opposite. Um, Alright, so. Alright, now let's see. Yeah, that's good. Now when you press here, nothing gonna happen. Send it, it was sent. Now press on this. There we go. There we go. Mm, you could do this, and also on here, you could also do it. But a one dot text equals here is gonna be the opposite, so it's gonna be this way. Because when you press it, it's just the button being pressed. So you can do it this way, and that's gonna work just fine. Run it. Type something. Send it. I'm gonna change. Boom, 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 boom. That's pretty cool, right? Alright. Now, when I press on this button, I want text box 2 colors to change. So, double click on it. And simple again. We want text box 1. The identification name of this text box 1. So, text box 1. Dot text or dot color, sorry. There are four color. There are two different colors. So, if you put dot and then put color, there will be back color and four color. That color I shall change the white or the background color the white and something else. And four color is um, the inside or whatever or the things that are written, like the font, let's say the font equals color dot red for example. Let's run. 
let's say thanks thanks for watching send it change the color was changed perfectly nothing here happens here again it changes um yeah that's pretty much it for this video uh make sure yeah that's it pretty much for this video um just a quick quick note um i know my videos take a while at least one took 20 minutes and it really doesn't require that much time to make such a simple software application whatever you want to call it call it but hey i like to teach you guys everything like from from scratch so i take time explaining every single line like i did um that's the only reason my videos take a while and take too long but i hope you guys are learning something from it and i'll post this on my website computertech.time-guard.com and I'll post also the project files there so you could download it. Um, again, that's. Again, I'm sorry for the long videos, but I really like to make them this long. Those of you who know me know all my videos are too long, and all of them are long, and. Uh, but all of them has information. Like, yeah. So thank you so much for your time. Um. Please make sure to, to subscribe if you haven't already, give it a thumbs up, and share. Thank you.